My name is Dr. Wes Bellamy, and I'm from Charlottesville, Virginia. Thank you so much for having me for your Martin Luther King lecture. I cannot speak to how proud I am of young people like yourselves working to change your communities, working to change your city, and ultimately working to change the world. Today, I wanna to spend a little bit of time talking about a word that means a lot to me, sacrifice. Martin Luther King Jr., many of you have read about, but many of us have not thought about the ultimate sacrifice that he gave to his people, to his community, and to the culture. When we talk about sacrifice and Dr. King, a man who was assassinated for fighting for civil rights, I ask you, if he was willing to give his life, what are you willing to give? Some people will say, well, I don't wanna die for fighting for civil rights. Some people will say, I don't wanna be uncomfortable while fighting for civil rights. Others will say, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Others will say, I'm willing to put a little bit of what we call in America, skin in the game. Others will say, I'm still trying to figure it out. All of the above are okay, but what's not okay is doing nothing. Every single person has a decision to make. What are you willing to do to bring about change? My favorite Dr. King speech of all time goes a little like this. I come here today to plead with you. Believe in yourself, believe that you are somebody. We don't have anything to be ashamed of. No Johnsonian civil rights bill can do this for us. No Lincolnian Emancipation Proclamation can do this for us. If the Negro was to be free, then he or she must sign with a pen, with an ink of self-assertive manhood, their own Emancipation Proclamation. Don't let anybody take your manhood or womanhood for that matter. Believe in yourself, believe that you are somebody. I want everybody to know how special they are. Somebody told a lie one day. They couched it in language. They made the word white pure and clean and almighty when you look in the dictionary. Then they, pro they wrote the word black and they made it ugly and evil and not good. And then he went on to say that he wants to get the language right tonight. He wants to get the language so right that everybody will yell out, yes, they're black, yes, they're proud of it, yes, they're black and they're beautiful. And Dr. King wanted people to understand that it is okay to be different and still fight for what's right. But Dr. King, a man who knew that his life was coming to an end, for in the speech he gave in Memphis, Tennessee, the night before his assassination, he described how he had already been to the mountaintop. He described how he had taken the water as far as he could take it, and now it was up for someone else to do what they had to do in order to carry the load and continue the fight. A man who sacrificed his life, whose family lost a loved one, whose children lost a father, whose wife lost a husband, whose community lost a hero. That was his sacrifice. What is yours? It's a question that I often ask myself. Wes, what are you willing to sacrifice for what's right? What are you willing to sacrifice for the greater good? I think about my own family, and here in Charlottesville, Virginia, where I was the youngest person ever elected to our city council, where I was only the seventh black person ever elected, and where I was an individual who had to go through a great deal of sacrifice. For even at my home right now, there is what we call the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the FBI, who are outside of my house because there was a death attempt on my family's life. Someone came to our house in the middle of the night after writing a letter saying that we would be dead by the end of the week. Someone came to our house and they loosened up all of the lug nuts on our tires to try. And when we drive off, essentially the tires would fall off and then we would subsequently die. But it didn't work. We persevered through. The higher power had a different calling for us. But we've had people do a lot of different things. We've had bomb threats at my daughter's elementary school. 
We've had hateful things sent to our house. We have had people try to intimidate my wife or try and say disrespectful things to us while we're out in the community. We've had people blame me and say that I'm single-handedly trying to destroy our city or saying that I was trying to destroy our state or that I was only causing division and causing hate all because I wanted the statues of people who I deemed to be inherently racist removed from our public parks. But none of those things persevered. And when I think about sacrifice, you can't talk sacrifice without talking courage. So now I ask each and every single one of you, what are you willing to sacrifice to make your school a better place, to make your community a better place, to make your family a better place, for you to be a better person? Where's your courage? Where's your courage to challenge that person who thinks that they can intimidate you to fight for what's right? Where's your courage to not fight with your fist, but fight with your mind? Where's your courage to sacrifice the feeling of doing something hateful, but fighting with love? Where's your courage to do research, to find out how you can change policy to make a more equitable and equal place for all? Where's your courage to speak to that person that you normally wouldn't speak to? Where's your courage to go into that community that you normally wouldn't go into and help out? Where's your courage to do the things that people think that you can't do? Where's your courage to stand up for what's right? As a people across the world, we are seeing a wild and crazy time. We're seeing hate groups rise from every corner of the world. We're seeing fascists and people who think that their white supremacist ways and their hateful rhetoric will all make us go away, that they can scare us, that they can intimidate us, that they can make us just stop fighting for the good fight. Where's your courage to stand up to them? In Charlottesville, even with all of the hate, I love my community. Why? Because it's a place that I know the people here have my back. Right, wrong, or indifferent, the people in our community, for the majority, are gonna stand up and fight for what's right. When people came to our community with torches, with guns, with swords, with shields, trying to scare us, trying to put fear into us, trying to take over our city, we stood up and we fought back. We showed our courage. We showed our character. And then we committed ourselves to working together. Black people, white people, young people, old people, people who don't always get along or even agree, decided that we will not allow hate to win. So I ask you, will you let hate win? Will you allow us to be divided? Or will you look at your brother or your sister or those who you don't agree with and stand and fight with them for what's right. If civil rights is important to us, what will you sacrifice? Why not start today? Let's get to work.